My name's Paul, the maker of Slippery Dicks Gun Wax, which you've all been kindly buying for the past few months. Um, the purpose of this video is we've got a few more products, uh, Slippery Dicks, stock stain, Slippery Dicks, stock oil. There'll be a finishing oil coming out shortly for the iron and shine. Uh, so what better way to show you what it does is to create a video for his Facebook page, his web page, YouTube. And what we're going to do is refurbish an old Mos Mossberg uh, 2.2 rifle stock uh, from start to finish. This one happens to have got varnish on it, so the first process will be nitromose, get the varnish off, then we'll go to sanding, staining. The beauty about our stain is it's uh, really thin and oil-based stain, not a thick, gloopy oil-based stain as you can get, but it's really thin. So from day one, it's soaking in and penetrating deep into wood. Then after that process, we'll go to oil in the stock, which keep oiling it, oiling it, oiling it, and then when it starts sitting on the stock, at that point then is when I'll start wet and drying it down between coats of oil. And right up to the point where you'll end up with a matte stroke satin finish, which then at that point that will be, we'll buff that up and show you what it looked like for like your game shooters, your pigeon shooters, because obviously they don't like a eye gloss stock for reflection. And then when we showed that process, we'll then continue to create an eye gloss finish on the gun for people on eye gloss finish, game clay shooters. A lot of clay shoots like an eyegloss finish because the reflection is not going to scare clays off. Um, so that's the idea of the video. Watch it, enjoy it hopefully. Any questions, go to my Facebook page, Stocks Refinished. The video will also be on the website www.slipperydicksgunwax.co.uk and we'll even stick it on YouTube. So if you can excuse, you'll find it somewhere. Enjoy the video. See you soon. Right, so here we go. Varnish removal. What you need? Scratch back pad. Tug and paintbrush. Paint and varnish stripper. Get it from anywhere. This one's from Wix. So, we put, bear in mind, eye protection, just in case you get any splashes. Uh, rubber gloves. As you can see, my invisible. And although this isn't like the old paint strippers used to buy, it is preferable to leave a window and the door open. So, firstly, paintbrush, dab it in, put it on your gun. Don't spread it thin, leave it, leave it quite thick because you'll, it'll only take more coats to do it. So, and you don't give us a deal, it's not like you're wasting it. You, you do about 30 guns with that, so. Anybody that's got 30 guns by a tub of that, it'll last your lifetime. Like I say, put it on generously. Because it does dry and leave patches. It may it may well dry, still dry and leave patches. I might have to do more than one coat. And uh, once you've got all your gun covered, it usually takes about an hour to uh, really soak in and get to most of the varnish off. More often than most 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 times you'll you'll put you'll have to put two coats on. But uh, even if it looks as though it's done it with one coat anyway, I always put another coat on because it'll lift that last little bit that's sat in grain. And it's, it's just less sanding. So you, you see, as you can see, look, I've not, uh, I've left it quite thick. See, it's not like you're wasting it, there's enough, there's enough there to do an armory. But make sure you cover all the gun properly. It's advisable to put some protection on your kitchen table, it just says broken noses and things like that. Keep spreading it on. It's not bad stuff, this actually. It's, it's not expensive from where I just uh, where, from Wix, where I get mine from. It, uh, I think it's about seven quid or something like that. But like I say, it does do a fair few few guns if you're thinking of going through your cabinet. So keep putting plenty on. Don't be scared of it. It's only, it's only wood, as I, as I always say. It's only wood. You can't it really hurt it. So when we get this off, we'll then go into uh, sanding mode. We no, usually I start with 320 sanding mode, then 400, then I'll probably go down to about 600, 800, and then we'll start to, 
to apply. The new stain I've just developed, which will be on the website shortly, uh, the stain you can apply as much of a, as many as little coats as you want. The beauty about my stain is it's oil based, same as the finished coat. So, as unlike some other gun stains, which are water based, from, from the very first coat of mine you put on the gun, it's starting to soak in and protect the wood. So when you, you finish your gun, you think, well, I've put 10 coats of oil on that to finish it off. Well, you haven't actually, because you could have put two, three, four, five, six coats of oil on because your stain's in oil. So it's protection all the way through. All the way through this stage, you're protecting your gun and it's soaking in deeper and deeper and deeper. And uh, that's probably a good thing, can't it? We're nearly there. We've nearly got all this on. Looks like it's working already. Not there. Get down here. We've gone over the side. Yep, so if I just stand that up. The last bit down where my fingers were. And so this isn't as lethal as the old paint stripper we used to use, but it's still not advisable to get it all over yourself. And that is completely covered, as, as you can probably see. It's starting now. The, the paint strip is starting to turn brown, pure and simply. That's the varnish and stain coming off the gun. I'll leave that for an hour. We'll come back to it with the Scotch Bright pad. And uh, it should nearly all rub off. Let's have a look. It's been on for a while, so should have got a little bit of action. So I'll get lead. Play it that way so you can see what I'm doing. Scotch Bright pad. Rub all varnish off. See, it's all coming off, all the varnish is coming off. Don't worry about the grain and cross grain and this and other one. Pick all that back up, then it pad marks on it when we sand it. Just uh, get all the good. Let's get our ink. Let's have a look. Camp cloth. It's coming off all right, that. Scratch pad again. You can see it's coming off quite easy. I want another coat. It's uh, it's not looking too bad. The grain's starting to pop now a little bit. It'll look nice when it's got uh, the new uh, Cypridix stain on it. Make that grain look lovely. The, the thing with the stain I've made is if you've not got a lot of grain, when you put the stain on, it darkens the grain and it really, really stand, makes it stand out. If you like, you know, more coats you put on there, be the green nail but look, but uh, you put as little enough and little off, as much on as you like, and you just stop when you're ready. Um, but the thing with the stain, the oil as well, it put on top of the stain after. The oil's got a, a slight tint to it, as most of them have. So when you think you're nearly where you are with the stain, stop, because it'll go a touch darker when you put the oil on, see what I mean? But that's coming off. Great. Look at the gun. So the, the beauty about this uh, stripper that I use, it's um, don't burn your fingers like other stuff unless you've got very sensitive fingers. But, uh, if this were the old fashioned Nitro Moors stripper, you'd be soaking hands in cold water by now. But this is quite good. And it works. You know, so when I win a chicken dinner. Sending a tip with pad. If uh, you think it's not fetching lots off, it's 
bear in mind you paddled it, plugged up. So let's take one or two like that here. You're not here. You can pick them up from somewhere like the Q in paint department or Wilkinson's will probably have them. You know. But it's a, you don't need anything rougher than a scotch pad. It's only to face varnish off, isn't it? You're not sanding the rubber that, that comes next. You can see there now that it's drained. It's practically got all the varnish out. By the time it's had a good sand, it'll um, look quite nice actually. Take it off. Make some space on that. Yeah. Easiest way to get varnish off, otherwise you're sanding hours on end, trying to get it off. And it's just sanding, if you're indoors, it's, uh, it's just the dust. And it, obviously, most of you have not got a workshop, I'll put you for a clean pad. Most of you have not got a workshop, you'll be doing this on your kitchen table or on your workshop, so the least sanding you can do in your property, the less aggro you're going to get. Quite nice. This, uh, although obviously we're only taking varnish off, Scotch Bright Pad will also, not inadvertently, but it will also be sanding your gun slightly, so it will already be starting to take some of your scratches out. No, not a lot, but they're doing something, so it, it is a rough pad. So, you're sort of killing, killing sort of two birds with one stone whilst you're shipping varnish. You know, varnish you're also giving them one a bit of sand. So, it's all helping on your way to get it ready to steam. Let's just get a bit of a wipe just to get the greasy bits off it. You can handle wipe and I'll get stain coming off in the varnish. Get that bit of a wipe and then give you all the gun further down. Turn it round. Get that last bit off. And I'm looking at that, I'll get the rest off. In the sanding process, because looking at it, there's not a deal of it left in the grain. So it's, it doesn't really just get that little bit in there on the loading eye on this gun. Oh, yeah, the next process will be 320 grit sandpaper. And there you have it. Varnish is off. I'll do that a wipe down now with a wet soapy cloth, get rid of all the stickiness off it, keep it sticky, then we'll have a look at sand in it, yeah? But you can already see, perhaps can you with the light, this gun's going to look great when it's done. The, the grain, although it looked very boring and plain before we stripped it, the grain's going to look outstanding. Right, and wash your time. Stock's quite dry now after um, paint stripper, so I'll get some 320 sandpaper. It's hard for you to see, you're not going to see it on video camera, but there's a lot of fine scratches on this gun. A lot. There's no, there's no real bad, there's a bit of a chunk here, but don't make it, but there's, there's a lot of fine scratches on. So, what we'll do is we'll take it back to 320, get most of the scratches out. And then what I'll do then is, I'll slightly, with my hand, I'll get some water on my hands, 
I'll let them go. Just dampen it. Leave it a couple of minutes and then I'll dry it with the air dryer, which dries quite quick the air dryer. And what that will do then is once I've sanded it with that, it'll lift the grain again. And I'll sand it with 600, which will then cut the fluff off that we've raised by putting water on it. And then hopefully you shouldn't get any lifting through when you're staining and oiling. So, 320 grade sandpaper, you don't need a big piece. Sand away. The one thing to watch for, it's not, not so much at this stage, but when you put all your stain on and when you're oiling up, and now you do oil up, oil up, oil up until it starts holding on the top. In theory, you can just about see it stop soaking in, and then um, when it stops soaking in, between every coat of oil, I let them dry it down. Now, when it comes to that stage, be careful on your sharp edges there. See it, that edge there, such as these edges here, because it's very easy to rub through the stain and the oil, and then you'll end up with light patches on your gun, which I'll explain that as we're going, but for this purpose, you're just taking all the marks out. This is quite rough sand in 320. The grain's quite rough on it, it's lifted a lot already, what with the nitro mores and what have you. So, you get most of the marks out, get it as smooth as you can with this, we'll wet it down, dry it with the air dryer, any more grain that lifts up, we'll take off with the 600, see how that goes. If it feels smooth enough, fine. If it doesn't, I'll go a bit lower, maybe a thousand. Then when it feels nice, bear in mind what you can see now is what you'll see when it's finished. So if you don't get this section how you want going to look when it's completed, you're wasting your time. This is the part now that creates the end product preparation, as they say. Right, let's go. Sand paper. Always sand with the grain. I know you've got to get in here and what have you, but still. Sand with the grain. A bit tedious, but it doesn't matter. You'll get your best finish. You won't get to you won't get to the end and think, oh god, look at them scratch marks going across the look. Sand with the grain every time. It's uh, it's not hard work, just a bit boring. Get in your kitchen or your workshop, put your music on, take your brain out. Just sand away. And you get on your obviously your longer bits here. You can get your foot down a little bit. Up here so you can probably see the gun better. You don't need to see a video of my head, you just need to see a video of the gun. It sounds quite easy, to be honest. This is just run of the mill 320 aluminum oxide sandpaper. Get yeah, from anywhere, any DIY shop, builders, merchants, anywhere. Get down to bottom now. Again, it's awkward again, like this place here, it's awkward, but keep going with the grain. Don't go any other way. Don't be tempted to think, oh, I'll just rub across it there because you'll get right to end. And as soon as you go, if you go to the point where you want it eye gloss, as soon as you get your eye gloss on it, you'll look at it and you'll see all the marks through it, just like you can when you buy a new gun. You can see all the factory sanding marks on it because they don't use a sort of dual action sanding. You see all the little swirly, scratchy circles on your new gun. Oh. If you just do it one way like this and go fine enough with your sandpaper, you'll eliminate that problem. It's just a little bit time consuming, but like I said, if this is the point where it makes or breaks your gun when it's finished. As I said, poor preparation. Yeah, it's really knocking that grain off now. It's getting there. Just got to get up that. Turn it around a little short while, turn this around. You better, I mean this is a nice piece of rubber this, but if you're doing it at home, uh, get an old towel or something like that, or an old blanket or an old sheet or something, anything like that. Because it's no good sanding one side of your gun, while the other side of your gun's getting scratched on the work surface, or if there's any grit under it or anything like that. And the only thing that's on this mat in place is a little bit of wax and it ain't going really it. But yeah, it's... Uh, it's no good making one side look nice while you're scratching the other side. But you've really got to... Yeah, that's coming nice now. You've really got to uh, pay attention to what you're doing. Detail every time. Don't try and get it all in a holding air there. You've not got a chance. A job like this, 
Once, this is the hardest part. Once this is done, you're perhaps going to spend 10 minutes a day on your gun for 7 to 10 days. It's not, a, it's not a quick job. You can't do this in two days. It won't look right. You'll spoil it. Just take your time. Make sure that you don't want to shoot your gun or the particular gun you're doing for a couple of weeks. Because once it's done, you better play it. Cure for a, a few days, you know, just to just to make sure then you can keep going back and get it a little buff and what have you. You may even look at it and think, oh, I've missed a bit there. There's a bit of dull fat on my shine. I'll, I'll just put a bit more onto it. But don't rush it because you won't be happy when it's done. That's going up nice. It's going up nice. The last little bit of wax that's in the, in the grain, the last little bit, that's what's coming out on the sandpaper. Just keep turning your sandpaper around and just keep with it. Right, obviously for video purposes, I'm not going to make you sit at home watching me sanding this down all day. So, obviously I'll continue to draw the gun with 320, but that has got any fine scratches out there beyond so. As I said, here's one prepared earlier on this little bit where I've been sanding. 600. You don't need to do it this quick because I've done it this quick. I'm doing it this quick for the camera and for you, obviously. Take your time. But 600. That then. I'll just knock off any marks that your 320 is left on. Because it is quite close, 320. When you think about you, you when you think that when you finish, it's got to. Well, if you want a glide gloss gun, when you're finished, it's going to look like this. Unless you want a satin finish if you're game shooting or pigeon shooting and things. But it's got to, it wants, if you're doing eye gloss finish, it will look like that. It won't look like that if you don't do this bit right. So I'll put that back there in a minute. Let's see. So if you want that, do this. Nice and steady, take your time. No rush. Keeps you out of house. Can't get into trouble in your shed. And that you'll do, obviously, all your gun, everywhere. You see, this sandpaper, although it's not that fine, this sandpaper's that fine, it's actually making your wood shine already a little bit. Like that. And then what I'll do with that now, obviously, when I've got all the gun at this stage, and I'll show you, I'll set the video going again. Bit of water, rub it on, dry it with the air dryer, fluff it up, rub it again. And then if you're ready, I'll stain. It'll look quite good this one, it's done. For a bit of a sweeping rush angle, it's got some nice grain on it. I'll come back when it's ready for water and re sand it. Hiya. As you can see now, We've sanded the gun, it's been sanded with 320, I've got a quick sand with 600, with no more marks in it, I hope, can't see any, quick inspection, yep, all right, next step, as we said earlier, wet cloth, I'll not do all the gun, I'll do a section of it, then you can throw, carry on, it's the exact same, wet your stock, I'll do this over a bit, Nice and wet. This is quite damp, this cloth. It's a quick rub it in. I can feel it fluffing up already. It's all fluffing up nice. Yeah. So then, speed it along, air dry it.
Right. See, before, before I did that, this, this was silky smooth. Now it's really rough again, which is good because what you don't want is it doing this while you're trying to finish your gun. So, we get 600. Don't need a big piece. And take off all the fur, as I call it. It's not a long job. It's quite easy. Just make sure you get it all off because, as I said earlier, however it looks now is however it'll look when it's finished, apart from the fact it'll be a different colour. So you need to make sure you get all this off. As I say, it's quite easy. Take your time. Don't leave any on if you can help it. You can do it again if you want. Once you've sanded it, you can wet, wet it again just to make sure. It's coming up like flower, so that's quite nice. Keep going with the green, as I said before. Don't try and go across your gun. We'll put marks in it that you'll see when it's finished. Over the top. It's quite simple. It's not hard, it can't be hard if I can do it. Let's get to go right around the corners. This book plate that's on it, it didn't fit. It's the original book plate, but it was actually a fraction smaller than the stock. So what I've done when I've sanded it, I've put the book plate on and I've sanded it all together. So now it's flush. And as I, as I keep sanding and sanding and sanding, the sand marks will come out of the book plate and eventually it'll finish shining. But it's flush now. If you've got a book plate that's short, this is like an old plastic type baker light since the 60s gun. Uh, obviously you can't do it with a rubber book plate, but if you've got a plastic book plate, put it on and sand, sand everything while it's on. And it'll finish up smooth. Don't forget all the Sandy and all the little details. See, like I said, with the three and a light book plate, I can sand straight off it and it's, uh, everything will become smooth at the same time. You know that? Now that is. It feels like rubbing glass. This is smooth as silk. Just that little bit of water. Like I said, you can repeat it if you want. I, if I were you, I would. Why, why wouldn't you? It's your gun. Make it look. You want the best. You, when you're finished, you've got to look at it and think, oh, that's the best one at the shoot. So the more preparation you do, the better the finish. Right, so that. It's all sanded, there's no marks left in it, as you can see. So continue that process all the way through your gun. It's not a big job, 20 minutes, half an hour. By all means, wet it again and do it again. Just be do double sure that you've got everything. And the next stage will be putting on split relix gun stain. Right, as you can see, sand it all we've gone after wetting it down. Smooth as silk. Look. So now I'm with the stain. This is my own stain. Probably can't see it. But there you go. That's what it is. Got a slight red tinge to it. Put in a little uh, tin. Obviously that's the normal size bottles. Um that's the stain size bottle. I put it in a little tin because I'm clumsy and I keep knocking bottles over. So I have in a tin that I can't knock over. So, you can do it how you want. Cloth, lint-free cloth, right, whatever this and other. I prefer to use my fingers. The beauty about my stain is, like some other stains, it doesn't stain your fingers. So, just be careful that you're not allowed to do anything. A bit of oil, dab on my finger. And on it goes. And you'll see. Just about straight away. The grain starts to pop. It really does bring out the grain. At this stage, later later on when you're still putting oils and stains on, they'll, they'll take most of the day for, per coat for it to dry. 
But what you'll find, because it's a bare gun, this will be dry in no time. So you can keep applying, 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 and then all you've got to do is make sure that it's dry. And apply some more. But like I said, at this stage, for the first few coats, it'll dry qu really quickly because obviously the gun's bone dry and bare. It just soaks in. See, can you see that? The light's not the best in here, but the grains really start to come out. So, carry on. You can put you can put plenty on. Just make sure you rub it in. Leave leave no excess on. Just put plenty on. Rub it in. Really rub it in. Maybe a little bit forget. Took the butt plate off at this point for one reason, one reason only. It won't stand up with the butt plate when I want to leave it to dry, so I've just took the butt plate off while I oil it and stain it. But every time I sand it, I'll put the butt plate back on. As I said before, it'll all end up the same size, thickness, shape. But that's it's going to make a really nice looking gun for an old gun. Look very nice. As you can see already, it's already dry, but as you can see already, the grain's going to look amazing on this gun. Really, really, luckily we've picked a good gun to do the video. Or well, should I say, a well-figured stock. But yeah, if you look, look at there, look at the grain coming out. The, the, the wax have developed, it sort of, it sort of pulls, it pulls the grain out, it, it darkens it slightly, obviously to enhance it. And it just looks amazing. I mean, none of that were ever done before we took the varnish off. You couldn't see any of this green. But it's really going to make a good gun. So, continue your first coat. All wet your gun. Make sure you get everywhere. And we'll come back shortly and um, have a look at it. Put another coat on. Just to show you the process so far. It's all at one coat of stain. Drying quite nicely, but dry in a minute now. And as you can see, the grain coming out already. It really does make the grain pop. And the pistol grip there, the grain's lovely. So we'll just let that dry a bit longer. And then we'll put the second coat on. Right, as you can see, first coat of stain's dried. Dried quite nice. Smooth, there's no lifted grain. At this stage, if you've got any lifted grain, just uh, get your fine sandpaper and knock it back off again. But don't just do it in one spot, because you'll have a ball patch. Feather it out a little bit, then re-oil that part, and then re-oil it all again. So, now, we're going to add a second coat. You just keep adding these coats until you're happy with the colour of the gun. And um, see how you go from there. So, second coat it is. Again, you can put plenty on, but rub it in. Don't leave lines on it. Don't leave, at this stage, you won't really get them, but don't leave finger marks in it. Keep the hands moving all the time. And you'll see it just starts getting its colour and it just keeps getting better. What you've probably noticed. Is on this gun, unlike most guns, there's no checkering. It's a coincidence it didn't have any checkering on it. Just bear in mind when you're doing your own gun, just keep away from the checkering. You don't need to go into the checkering. What I usually do is, if I'm just cleaning the checkering out, I get a toothbrush, soft toothbrush, I dip it in a little bit of nail varnish remover and just brush 
in line with the checkering one way, brush in line with the checkering the other way, just a couple of times, get a cloth, dab it dry, and you'll see how clean it comes and all the muck that comes out of the checkering. It really does look better. I'll um, try and find a gun to show you that in a later video, if that's okay. Yeah, that's going on great. Just keep rubbing it in. You know what I mean? Don't just put it on and leave it. You know, keep going backwards and forwards, rubbing it in. You can go over it again when you've done it all. So this is the second coat. This one will probably have, looking at the grain and the colour, because it's quite, it's quite a deep red stock anyway. This won't need many coats of stain. You will judge how many of needs. Uh, but just bear in mind when you put the oil on, the oil will tone it down a, a thou darker than it already is. So if you think, mm, that looks alright, I might just put one more coat on and that'll be it. Then don't, because your oil that you put on after will just darken it up a touch more. Not a lot, but just a touch. As you can see. And because this is an oil, it'll start, as soon as it starts going on, it'll start getting that shine anyway if you can just see I know it's I know it's wet but you'll start getting the shine okay just keep doing that all with me gun let it dry and then we'll come back to it right there as you can see totally recoated it finished with the second coat which we've just been doing earlier it's just soaking in we'll see what that looks like and if I think it needs to go darker or bring the grain out more, I'll put additional coats on, but we'll let that dry and uh, see how it turns out. But as you can see, the grain is starting to go quite dark. I don't know if you can actually tell with the lighting in here, but I keep trying to turn it around so we get to a position where you can see it. We'll let that dry and take it from there.